Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be what drives lovers away. I've got two emails I'm going to go through with you. They're both success stories. The first one is an email from a guy who originally found my work because he fell under what I call the illusion of action. And by acting needy and clingy, he literally chased this woman out of his life who he thought was the one. Of course, he was all heartbroken after that, and that's what led him to my work. And so he's read my book 11 times, and the key is he's read it 11 times, and that's why he's got a good success story. So he's been dating this new girl now many months later, and he just details how easy and effortless things are compared to all the effort he was putting into the woman that he literally chased out of his life, but it all worked out. And the second one is an email update from a woman. And I originally answered her email in a video newsletter called Needy People Wear You Out many months ago. She had a boyfriend that was acting needy, clingy, constantly talking negative about himself, putting him down, basically trying to make her into her therapist and her mommy. And she was just totally losing attraction for this guy and had had enough. So she did some of the things that I suggested in the video newsletter where I covered her email and she talks about how things have dramatically improved and she finds happiness and satisfaction in her relationship again, which what I think is cool about that is that she was literally on the verge of dumping this guy, but she was able to communicate with him in a way that he was able to understand and well, to his credit, he took corrective action and stopped doing these things that were incredibly turning her off and now they both benefit because of it so I have a quote that I wrote in this topic and then we're going to go through the email because so many people deal with this and it's not it's not just their personal lives or their friendships it's also how they view themselves in business or career or how they feel deserving of things maybe they're overweight right now and then because they've convinced themselves that it's just their lot in their life and it's the way things are, remember, people will act consistently with how they view themselves to be. And it doesn't matter whether the view is accurate or not. And that's what you're going to see here. And like when I was younger, this is the kind of stuff that I used to do in my personal life, my dating life, without realizing it, just turning women off by because I didn't have a very positive worldview of myself. And the, the biggest part of how self-help can help your life is really just becoming aware of how your thoughts, your words, your deeds, your physiology, your body language, the tone of your voice, how all of them are communicating something about you. And even if you don't feel like an amazing success or up until this, you watch this video, you've never really felt like you've had the kind of success that you deserve, I mean the past doesn't equal the future as Tony Robbins said. Really, from this point forward, you got a clean slate to become anything you want. But it really boils down to how you view yourself. And just because you didn't succeed yesterday or with that last girl or that last job that you applied to or that last person you had hoped would become your new best friend doesn't mean that the next person or somebody that you're going to meet in six months or a job you're going to be offered or go for in a year – doesn't mean you won't get that particular job. The only thing we have control over in our lives is what we do today, what we do to improve and enhance our skills and the value that we can add because earning money, becoming rich, becoming successful really is a result of becoming really awesome at adding value to people's lives. And The way to become awesome at something is to choose something that you're curious about, that you're really interested in, that you're really passionate about, that you really love and you enjoy to the point where it doesn't feel like work when you do it. It feels like playing. And when you work at something that feels like playing, time just kind of disappears. It falls away and you don't look at the hours or the weeks or the months or the years that you're putting into it. You really enjoy the journey. You really enjoy the process and over time the more your skills grow and the more value you can add the more you're able to negotiate on your behalf to get a better paying job or to get a raise or to get somebody to enthusiastically 
accept your invitation to become their business partner or an investor in your business if that's what you're looking for. It all starts from one thing, adding value. And you first, you have to see yourself as having value before the world and the universe can conspire to demonstrate that to you. And it's like most people, when you listen to how they talk about themselves, they say things like, oh, I'm really stupid or oh, this always happens to me or I always do, I'd always do the d- dumb thing or I always forget my car keys or I always forget to do this or I always forget to do that. Oh, it never works out for me. I mean, you just listen to how people talk about themselves and it's really amazing. I remember when I first started learning these things, it was just catching myself and how I talked about myself or how I thought about myself because it's a moment by moment thing. The more you become aware of something, the more you're able to change and influence yourself and move in a different direction. So I got this quote that I wrote on this topic and then I'm going to go through the first guy's email. And the quote says, the reason why most people do not have the quality of lovers and friends they really want and deserve is because of how they view themselves. People tend to think, act, and speak in ways that are congruent with their personal worldview of themselves. When they encounter people they want to either date or befriend, their negative and limited view of themselves influences their thoughts, words, and deeds in such a negative way that they actually repulse those they want to attract. The first step before you can attract the kind of people you want into your life is to decide that you deserve to have people like them. Once you have decided what you want and why you want it, your self-talk, words, actions, and body language must be congruent with your outcomes. Successful people put their best foot forward even when they don't feel at their best. Unsuccessful people put their worst foot forward because they are unconsciously sleepwalking through life without any awareness of how their negative thoughts and attitudes are sabotaging their success. And when you think about it, how many people do you know that you have met in your life are really into self-help or improving themselves? And when you tell people, hey, there's this really great book you should read or there's this really great self-help author you should check out. Or there's this really great DVD on self-help that I listened to that was really awesome. The number one excuse that you're going to get from most people is, I don't have the time for that. Just like that, they just completely, I mean, they just completely communicated. They're not open to learning. They're not open to improving themselves. And unfortunately, it's not until people hit the wall in life, metaphorically, if you will, sometimes physically, where they realize, you know what? What I'm doing is not working. I need to seek out new knowledge that I don't have and change my approach because I'm never going to get what I want if I keep behaving the same way. That's where I was when I was like 21, 22 when I got my first – it was Tony Robbins' personal power. I think it was like 91, 92 when he had all those infomercials on because I was – I had success in my life. I had a good job. I was going to school but I just like – just seemed like forever before I was going to – graduate college and it just it seemed like I was never really going to have the kind of success that I wanted and I knew something was off there was something about the way I was going about my life that was off and it wasn't until I went through his personal power that I realized that my thoughts my words my beliefs my self-talk things I said and spoke to other people it's just going through that made me aware of it just like I'm trying to help you become aware of your own self-talk and how it can have a dramatically positive influence on your behavior and also how it can be extremely negative. Like this particular guy, he didn't know any better. He wasn't thinking about these things. He's just living his life and goes through this really painful experience with this woman. He's thinking, what the fuck? And then he goes through a book like mine. He realized, oh, look at all the things I did. Well, of course she got rid of me. Well, no wonder it makes total sense now. So he says, hey, Corey, how are you? Well, I'm fucking awesome, of course. I wanted to share my success story that may help some of your viewers. I'm 30 years old and I found out about your work back in August when I was trying to get an ex back. I was crushed and I thought that I let the one get away. I did a video several years ago called The Myth of the One. You can actually Google that if you want to see it. It was horrible and I didn't take it too well. Well, most people don't. Remember, rejection breeds obsession. 
Even if you're not really into the girl, if she all of a sudden dumps you, then you think, oh, I lost the love of my life. I got to get her back. Since I was unfamiliar with your work, I completely fell into the illusion of action. What's fucked up is I actually thought I was doing the right thing by doing something. Well, when you've seen thousands of hours of movies and television shows that chasing and pursuing and acting like a stalker eventually wins a woman over, you can't help but become a little brainwashed by that. And besides, when you look around in society, how many people have you met in life that either have the kind of relationship that you want or they're able to date the kind of people that you think, wow, it would be really awesome to have that? Very few of them for most of us. As it turned out, it drove her further away. It was awful and I felt numb for weeks after. I kept coming back to your videos because they were making so much sense. Well, I like to say that what I teach is uncommon common sense, if you will. I mean, it's like the things that I share, it's not like so much that they're earth shattering. It's just often in most cases, it's the opposite of what you thought you should do or that you've been told that you should do. I discovered what really went wrong with my last relationship. I was acting weak, I was seeking her approval and failing her tests miserably. That's not to mention that I spoke too much about my feelings. A common theme you see in movies is TV is if a guy likes a girl enough and he talks about his feelings enough that she'll go, oh, you're so cute and sweet. She'll think you're cute and sweet in like a brotherly, brotherly way in real life. But in the movies, of course, you know the women just fall over themselves trying to date and marry these guys who gush about their feelings. You know, repeating a lie over and over does not make it reality. Ignoring the truth does not make it go away. Quite frankly, I was acting like a woman. I turned her off to the point of no return. I became so sick of feeling like shit that I was prepared to do anything. Now notice that. What if that's him metaphorically hitting the wall and saying, enough of this shit. What I'm doing is not working. I got to figure out what the fuck I'm doing wrong and take some serious corrective action. And until that moment happens in people's lives, whether it's their personal life or they get fired from their job or they get passed over for that promotion that they really wanted, until they get to the point where they're like, I'm fucking tired of this, enough of this, you can't help them. And that's why you, when you try to help people that haven't asked for it, especially when it comes to self-help or this kind of particular topic here, it's going to fall on deaf ears. He says, I started going back to the gym. I focused on my life and I quit making excuses because it's really about having an awesome life. Getting to a place where you love your life. If you're single, you love being single and you have a kick-ass time just hanging out by yourself or hanging out with friends and family members or people that you enjoy doing this. They have the same goals and values as you do because if you're having a kick-ass time by yourself, then you become a happy, whole, complete person. And then you can find somebody who also is a happy, whole, complete person to share your completeness with. Doesn't mean you have to spend your rest of your life with that one particular person, but it sure is nice to be able to date that kind of person instead of every time you meet somebody you really like and knocks your socks off, they're only around for a short period of time and you never get to know what it's like. That's what my 20s were like. That's what caused me to, to say, I'm fucking tired of this. It was after I left my wife that I was like, I'm gonna figure this shit out. I can't live the rest of my life wondering what it's like to be in love with somebody who's in love with me. It, it was a mission for me. I, I was like, I have to figure this out. I can't go through life. It'd be a fucking tragedy to go through my whole life and not experience what real true love is. And I've had the gift and the honor of of having several women in my life over the years now that I've got to experience that with. And what the sad thing is most people never get that once. They never know what it's like. They never even have one day, never even had one date with somebody who knocks your socks off or one session of making love. It's like it changes you. You're never the fucking same after that. It's like when you date somebody or you make love to somebody and you feel like they're the ultimate, they're the finest per woman or man on the planet depending whether you're a man or woman or what you're looking for when you have that experience 
like you get the experience of being with the best, you don't feel like you're lacking anything. It's like one of my favorite Lao Tzu quotes. He says, when you realize there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. In other words, all the possibilities open up to you. Because really all it is at the end of the day is a mind fuck. The people that don't have the things that they want, it's because of what they're telling themselves. And they don't even realize what they're, that they're telling themselves things that keep them from what they want. Like I said in the quote, most people are sleepwalking through life. They have no idea. I also decided that I'm going to read this shaved head motherfucker's book 10 to 15 times. That was definitely a great decision on your part. And for those of you that haven't read my book yet, go to my website right now. And if you subscribe to the newsletter, you can read it for free on my website. And if you're so inclined, you can also purchase the iBookstore version or the Kindle version. Or get yourself a paperback version so you can highlight and make notes in it. But the bottom line is the knowledge is there. So go to my website and at least subscribe to the newsletter and start reading it because you have to learn the baseline fundamentals. Again, the people with the greatest success stories, they always have read the book at least 10 times. He says, obviously I had a knowledge gap. Something wasn't working and I was fucking over it. Once again, he reiterates, enough of this. I'm fucking tired of it. I'm making a change. And I'm never going to be the same again. That's what it takes. When, until people get to that point, there's nothing you can do to help them. You must participate in your own rescue. I was dedicated and I read the book 11 times in six weeks. Dude, that's serious. Really, you should see my Kindle version. Damn near the whole book is highlighted. I have over 100 notes and I did all the exercises. My favorite was making the ideal woman list. You can Google Corey Wayne, How to Attract the Perfect Woman, where I'll take you through that list exercise if you're so inclined. I did a video on it a couple years ago. I was going out on dates, meeting new women, and applying my new knowledge. It was on my 12th read that I met someone new, a better looking, younger, and more compatible woman. Months before, I thought this was unattainable. From the beginning, I did everything right. I gauged her attraction. I let her do 80% of the talking and pursuing and I was just generally on my James Bond shit. We've been seeing each other for three weeks and things are going great. I've taken more of an assertive role in being the leader. It feels so freeing to overcome such an epic fail on the last relationship to dating an even better person who knocks my socks off. Well, like I always say, if you're if you've just found me or you've been fo- you've fo- been following me for a while, hoping to get an X back, one of two things is going to happen. If you read the book ten to fifteen times and apply it, you'll either get the X back or you'll get somebody better. And here's more evidence of somebody getting better. Either way, you fucking win. It's a win-win deal. You can't lose if you do the work and you put the time in. You will get there. Just focus on trying to get a little better each and every day. Just like you say, you either get your ex back or you'll find somebody better. I just said that. I wanted to share this story so hopefully you can share this with your viewers as a testament to what happens when you read the book 10 to 15 times. I've never felt so prepared. What would Confucius say about being prepared? Success depends upon prior preparation. Without said preparation, there is sure to be failure. Thank you for your work and filling in my knowledge gap. I made a $5 donation. Well, you know what? Donations are always appreciated. If you're so inclined, you can do it on my YouTube channel or you can go to my website and the toolbar at the bottom, click the donate button, donate whatever you want. Or you can make it a monthly recurring donation. It's totally up to you. Or at least refer a friend or family member who you think would value from what I have to offer. He says, I wish it could be more, but it's the holidays, bro. So this email is from you know, three or four months ago. I, w- I just wanted to show my gratitude however I could. I also referred my friends to your work as well. Well, I appreciate you having the faith and trust in me to refer your friends and family. So let's go to the woman's email. This one's a short success update. And again, you can Google Corey Wayne, needy people wear you out. If you want to see her original email where I go through and I detail exactly what she should do. So just to give you some background for those of you who may not seen the video or it's been a while since you've seen it, this guy was acting needy, he was acting weak, he's constantly putting himself down, constantly looking for validation from her. Why do you love me? Why are you with me? I mean just the kind of stuff that makes you go, makes you want to fucking vomit when you read this stuff. 
And she just was like tired of it because it was just incessant reassurance and incessant approval seeking. And so what I told her she needed to do is she needed to, to explain and talk to him. I'm not going to go through the whole thing again because I did a whole video on it. But the gist of it was she needed to talk to her boyfriend and think like a man in terms of logic and reason. Step one, step two, step three, step four. When he says something that turns you off, you got to tell him. When you say this about yourself – it makes me lose respect for you. It makes you look unattractive. It makes you look weak. It makes you sound like a little girl. It doesn't make you sound like this confident, awesome man that I fell in love with. And so she explained these things and it caused him to – I mean think think about it. No guy wants to willfully look like a bitch to his girl. No guy wants to feel like every time he says or does a specific thing, it makes him look – desperate, needy, weak, or approval seeking. And so she obviously communicated in a way that got through and made this guy go, wow, I really sound like a fucking weak bitch here and I need to do something about this. So she says, hello, Corey, I'd like to say thank you for the advice in your video. I have communicated straightforwardly because women tend to talk in relational examples. They'll give an example like of one of their girlfriend's boyfriends about what this particular guy does. And the average guy is going, oh, why is she telling me about her boyfriend? It's like I don't really care about this guy. I don't know him. And the woman's hoping that he'll draw a conclusion from the example as opposed to just saying, hey, when you talk about yourself in this way, you make yourself look like a fucking pussy. Now, I love you and I don't think you're a pussy but when you talk this way, it's totally disgusting. It's a turn off and when you say things like this in front of my girlfriends, it makes them go, ugh, and they feel bad for me. So don't say things. Even if you feel that way, go talk to a therapist or go get professional help if you really feel this is a problem or save it for your beer drinking buddies because you're not making yourself look attractive when you behave this way, when you act this way. When you think this way, this is how I expect a man is going to act. Da 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 da. And she explained it to him. And to her credit, as a woman, she sounds like a really good girlfriend because most women would just ditch the guy. They'd just say, You're a fucking pussy. I'm not feeling it. I don't feel any chemistry and dump the guy. And the guy's gonna be going, Well, I don't understand what I did wrong. But she obviously took the time and communi- to communicate with her boyfriend because she cared. Because she wanted to help him get it right. And to his credit, he was willing to listen and say, you know what? You're right. I have been acting like a total bitch. I'm sorry and I will do better. I will make you proud to have me as your boyfriend again. I have communicated straightforwardly to him how it makes me feel when he constantly puts himself down like you said. Remember, because men want to feel successful at making their women happy. When a woman is happy in a relationship, guys, of course, we take credit for it. Even though we might not have had anything to do with, do with it, we take credit for it. And when a woman is unhappy, we take that shit personally as well. We blame ourselves for it. And so when she explained herself in a way, she's basically saying, hey, when you do this, it doesn't make me happy. And for guys who were driven to succeed, that's basically saying we're failing. But here's what we could do to succeed. So it makes it an emotionally easy thing because remember, people will do more to avoid pain than they'll do to gain pleasure. And when you explain it in this way, hey, this caused me pain but this causes me pleasure, the guy will go, oh, okay. Well, they're naturally going to gravitate toward it. That's what I do a lot of. I don't explain it in my videos but whenever I fucking kick somebody in the balls, I'm usually associating a lot of negativity and a lot of pain with their incorrect actions and I talk about – pleasurable emotions and feelings that will be elicited if they do the right thing. It's not about making the guy feel like shit. It's about busting him in the balls because masculine energy at the end of the day grows through challenge. And that's what I'm doing oftentimes, especially when I'm dealing with a guy. Is I'm challenging his manhood just like a good coach that he may be playing football would. When you fucked up in football practice when I was high school, the coach was like, give me a lip. And if the coach thought you were being a fucking pussy, he'd get down in his three-point stands even though he didn't have pads on and he'd fucking knock you on your ass. And you'd be – he'd do this in front of the whole team and you don't want to be embarrassed. So you're like, I can do it, coach. Lately, there have been so many improvements in our relationship. He has seemed more confident in himself 
and he hasn't been begging for reassurance every night. That's fucking awesome. And it's a credit to you as a woman and the fact that you were obviously very good at communicating this to him. Because communication is more of an art than a science. And obviously, you're better than most. So you need to pat yourself on the back, honey, because you did great. In fact, whenever I told him I loved him, he smiles and says, I know. Han Solo in it. Damn. If you haven't seen the movie where he's about to be frozen in carbonite and he's about to be lowered in the chamber, she says, I love you. He says, I know. Great fucking line. Sounds like he may have started reading the book, which is a great thing. It's just such a relief to feel that pressure lifted from our relationship. I have also noticed since he's been depending on me less that he's spending more time with his friends again as well, which makes me happy to see. Remember what I talked about earlier in the video about sharing your completeness? Now he's starting to act like a complete person, a true equal, not like a little boy that needs mommy to tell him what to do like he was in the past. There has been less fighting as a result of this change and I, now, I am now very much satisfied with this relationship once again. Well, that was the exact opposite of the statement she closed her last email. and She wasn't finding much satisfaction at all in her first email. So great. Good job for you. Good job for your boyfriend. Obviously, the two of you have done a great job of communicating and meeting each other because that's the whole point. That's the whole point of being in a relationship is you're there to help each other grow and become more. You're there to meet each other's needs. And it sounds like the two of you are doing it in a really healthy way. So congratulations to you both. And much continued success. So if you'd like to get my help personally, go to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page of my website and follow whichever option works best for you as far as coaching options. And I will talk to you soon.